Good evening and welcome to the College of Complexes. My name is Tim. Me and Charlie are going to be doing an active review of the presidential candidates tonight, both Democrat and Republican. And I will make this disclaimer at the top of the uh, at the top of the college. I am not a Trump supporter myself, but I'm going to say, for purposes of this debate, I will be a diehard Trump supporter. So, the college consists of the following format. First, we'll have a, some announcements. Second, we'll have Charlie will go first to present the Democrats. I'll go second to present the Republicans. He'll then rebut me, and I'll rebut him. Then we'll go into questions, and then we'll have our infamous rebuttal period. Ooh. I ask that when you have questions, it's during you have a question, and when you're ready to rebut, you rebut President Trump and a Republican Party. I will not declare myself as a supporter and and booster of the Republican Party. Now, we're going to be doing two rounds tonight. Charlie's going to give up and give a first presentation. Then I'm going to do mine on the Republicans' candidates. Then uh, Charlie's going to go again and talk about why the Democrats need to be elected and what's wrong with the Republican candidates. And then I'm going to finish by giving why we should re-elect President Trump and the Republicans. Let's give a rousing round of applause for Charlie Paydock and his views on the Democratic presidential candidates. Okay, we had to put this together on short notice, but uh, since the topic was the presidential campaign, we thought we'd focus on who has declared themselves to date uh, as a candidate for office, officially declared. There's a lot of discussion of people, but it's uh, an interesting development considering the first primary is, is uh, nine months away. Uh, this is two parts of my presentation. The first part isn't terribly exciting, but it's probably the more important part is uh, I'm going to go through each of the Democratic candidates and give you a little while and on their political views, which I've researched. Uh, and the second part is we're going to look at an assessment of the Trump administration uh, alleged accomplishments. Anyhow, I've only got 10, 15 minutes, so let's get rolling on this. This isn't very long. The uh, Republicans, uh, I believe, are facing um, a certain defeat in court, in Congress, and in the contest for the presidency. You can see their elephants in the rears. Uh, this time, four years ago, uh, they had the opposite situation. They were flooded with candidates, most of whom you probably have never heard of since then. <laughs> they have all disappeared. Anyhow, there's a collection of their logos. Uh, anyhow, uh, just one or two little things regarding polls. And you see these all the time, especially on social media. But polls have certainly are, are unreliable predictors of the final outcomes, it, particularly at this time, because they capture not the conventions of the newly roused body politic but instead the fleeting impulses of the electorate that remain um, overwhelmingly disengaged. So in essence, only about 10 to 20% of the voters are tracking their campaigns closely. So in essence, the, the, it's even bad information. These people aren't engaged yet in the campaign. Um, also, a big thing is made, oh my goodness, they're gonna have big debates and getting on the, the, the debate thing. Uh, anyhow, there's no correlation between the, with the debates and uh, winning the presidency. Uh, people watch these things um, already had their minds made up. So nothing really changed, changed in, during the debate process. All right, I'm going to go through each of these very quickly. Now, you're going to have to read all of this stuff. 
much. But the that. first guy to declare was John Delaney of Maryland, uh, and it, he's a uh, uh, he, he's jump started the campaign. And a little known thing is he thinks he's gonna get a head start on it. He's visited every county in Iowa. Uh, yeah. Okay, another guy. I've been getting a lot of this thing, his things on social email. Is the, the guy who's not never held political office, Andrew Yang. Uh, he has a campaign based on protecting Americans from job stealing robots. Uh, he claims he's an ego free Asian, the opposite of Trump. But I like this guy because he's got something called the UBI, Universal Basic Income. And he's going to have $1,000 check sent to every American over 18 every month so you can pay your bills. So that's kind of good. He's got my vote. I like this guy. A guy, this is another one, uh, Julian Castro. He really hasn't released any details of his platform, uh, trying to capture or be the spokesperson for the Latino community. Uh, yeah, quite honestly, his mother's an activist who was pushed into this by his mother. But a nice guy. He's, I've heard him speak. He's, he's a pretty nice gentleman. Somebody you should probably all be familiar with is Camilla Harris, uh, state's attorney and federal attorney from California, now senator from California. Uh, she's got another one. Uh, the other guy had the UBI. But she's got the LIFT Act, L-I-F-T, and she, but you only get $500 a month from her <laughs> to help families. It's a good idea. Anyhow, she wants to tax the corporations and the wealthy, and everybody will get $500 a month. Now, she gets a little bit of a connection ideologically to Obama. Uh, he may be a replacement for Obama. She would also cost her votes because some people think Obama was a sellout. So this is Camilla Harris. Uh, she, um, another guy, I actually saw him last week. I've seen him, met him a couple times. From New Jersey, Cory Booker. Uh, now he's not going to give checks every week, but he wants to give every child a treasury bond at birth. He doesn't say how much. If it's a poor child, they get a larger, larger bond. So uh, he, he's a folk, he's a, trying to get basically focuses on social and racial equality. Uh, but he's uh, out, out in front there. One of the more interesting candidates uh, altogether is Tulsi Gabbard. Gabbard from Hawaii, the representative, the Hindu me first Hindu member of Congress. Uh, she is the anti-war candidate. She uh, served in the military in Iraq war as part of the National Guard, but she is opposed to regime change wars. Uh, she wants to lower military spending and reduce the number of nuclear weapons. So if you're an anti-war person, Tulsi is uh, your, your vote. Someone you should possibly all be familiar with from the People's Republic of Massachusetts. Uh, it's Elizabeth Warren. Uh, she spearheaded, most notably, the financial industry bailout. Uh, now she Actually, I kind of like her. She, she, she wants to restore the U.S. to a place where people can succeed if they work hard and play by the rules. Now, you can't go wrong with that. Anyhow, she wants to have a wealth tax of 2% uh, on the rich. And she's noted, and actually some of them are making fun of her now, because whenever she's asked a question, she responds, I have a plan for that. So she's got the answers to it. I also met Amy Klobuchar of Minnesota last week, and she's a very pleasant person. Uh, she's a, from Minnesota, the senator. Uh, she's basically identified as tackling what you would call 
kitchen table issues, like drug pricing. She's a very pleasant person. I believe she's very strong and personal friends with Rachel, Rachel Maddow, so she gets on TV all the time. Um, but she was a corporate lawyer, and she's called the Goldilocks candidate. Meaning, a, sort of a compromise, neither too hot nor too cold. So, but uh, she's got her hat in the ring. And of course, uh, Bernie Sanders, I don't know if you need to spend a lot of time on this, uh, looking for universal health care and higher taxes for the wealthy. Uh, so, okay. Uh, a newcomer to the race, just relatively recently, is Jay Inslee, and his entire campaign is in support of the Green New Deal uh, from Washington State Governor and plan pledges to make climate change the primary issue in the campaign. Okay, a new guy, he's going to be in town on Tuesday, as a matter of fact, speaking at Global Chicago, is a guy from Colorado. Uh, John Hickenlooper. Uh, he did two terms as Denver mayor and then was elected governor. Uh, he's a moderate uh, with bipartisan appeal. I mean, this guy is a middle of the roader. Uh, but he did say that Donald Trump, because Donald Trump's presidency, is a crisis that threatens everything we stand for. Anyhow, he's a, a, a centrist, if you wish, uh, if you find some of the other people a little too extreme in one regard or another. The next one, I don't really quite understand to some extent this candidate. I do like listening to him. He's an articulate young man. But Beto Arouk, who was the former U.S. Representative from El Paso, Texas, ran for senator unsuccessfully. And that does not deter him then from running for president. Uh, I think he should have stayed in the House a few years and maybe gotten a little more. But he's, he's, got, he's raising a lot of issues. And he certainly has the interest of the millennials and other young people, uh, much of our credit. He is a good speaker and an interesting one. So there's some contribution to the campaign. Uh, someone who's been identified with the Me Too Women's Movement uh, is Kirsten Gilbrand of New York, uh, who took, replaced uh, Hillary Clinton in the Senate and later got elected on her own. Uh, she's an outspoken critic of Trump's sexism. Uh, but she, and she also advocates some things like parental leave policy, I also believe that she is the most popular candidate for among men for some reason. Uh, That's interesting. Anyhow, this guy I like. I didn't know about him before researching this, but Wei Hassan, he's a mayor out of uh, Florida uh, who is running for president. The, uh, he he, he just, just talks about the American dream. He says it worked for me. It should work for everyone. But uh, I believe you said of Tallahassee, Florida, which is like not even the big state and city of Florida, but um, he's decided to bring his positive message uh, to uh, uh, the country here. Okay, next one. Another one I'm not terribly familiar with, but Tim Ryan is the congressman out of Youngstown, Ohio. And he's a seasoned veteran of Washington. He's had eight terms, uh, a good union organizer, advocate of renewable energy, wants to revitalize American industry. A uh, little thing that separates him from the others, he is a devotee of meditation and mindfulness. So if you're con contemplative, uh, you might be somebody you might want to consider. That's Tim Ryan of Ohio. Uh, he's now the thing that you got to look a little bit into this. I discovered he's pro-business and pro-fracking. 
And he cautions against Democrats leaning too far to the left. Uh, but uh, and he's a little mixed on the green economy. He kind of wants the green, green. He wants to keep the free market system. So I don't know about Timmy. Uh, might have to consider this. Another candidate. I'm not precisely certain why he's running. He's relatively new to Congress. Eric Sawwell. Uh, he's seen very often on the lefty media because he's on the Intelligence Committee, uh, which is in the news these days. <laughs> Nevertheless, he's running for president. Uh, he perhaps lacks experience and has a low national profile, maybe. But it's good to see if he's testing the waters. He's in his third term from Northern California. OK, another guy. This guy I kind of like. This guy, perhaps, is just really not thinking he's going to win. But Mike Gravel showed up again from Alaska, and he 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 uh, he, he wants to create. He's another guy. I like this. He wants to create a social wealth fund to distribute taxes from financial transactions. There's another guy. Yeah, you might get a check every month a month, and if we get a yearly dividend for all Americans. Yeah, I'm all for that. But the one thing I like about Mike Gravel is. Um, he says his bid is not to win, but to challenge the centrist views. He's trying to get the Democrats off the center, and his campaign is staffed entirely by teenagers. <laughs> yeah, I think it's pretty good. All right, uh, the guy not too far from here, uh, Mayor Peter uh, um, Buttigieg. Uh, depending on how you say it, uh, this mayor, uh, kind of a smart guy, Rhodes Scholar, he also was in the military, a uh, gay candidate, that uh, he, he claims he may appeal to coastal elites and his Midwest roots may bring him some votes over the advantage, uh, although he's going to lose Christians. And, and so forth. But an articulate young man uh, putting together an interesting campaign for the first time, perhaps not a traditional one, as you'd like to think of them. Another guy we may not know about is Seth Moulton. He's from Massachusetts, a Marine, but he wants to take back the idea of patriotism from the Republicans. He's, he's a real patriot. However, he does want to cut weapons programs and restore America's moral authority. Uh, he likes the Green New Deal, and he basically is a supporter of progressive issues, again, coming from the People's Republic of Massachusetts. Uh, anyhow, that's Seth. I mean, I know about, of course, Joe Biden uh, is 36 years in the Senate, and eight as vice president, and has significant name recognition. Um, let's see who we got. Michael Bennett. Uh, Michael Bennett may not be a common name, but he is a Colorado senator. Uh, he is largely responsible for helping Democrats to pass the Affordable Care Act. Um, in that regard, um, he's looking for single payer health care. Uh, he's got a thing called Medicare X. So, all right, that's Senator Bennett. We're almost done. Um, Steve Bullock of Montana uh, is rather interesting. He got reelected the governor the same day that Trump won the state for president. So he he got uh, you know. Um, he, he, even though he's in a red state, he got elected, uh, re-elected governor. Uh, he really, if you're against campaign financing, he's your man. I actually, there's one thing that's unique about Montana, is that um, he wasn't campaigning because he had to work in the legislature. Montana legislature only meets for 90 days every two years. 
So if you want to get something done, you got to do it then. So uh, that's the one he does. The last of all, just last week, the mayor of New York, uh, Mayor Bill de Blasio, there's some issues with people from New York about him, but he did install a minimum wage. He instituted universal pre-kindergarten in New York, and there has been a drop in crime. So uh, the mayor there, the last candidate, I don't know if she's really a candidate, more of an author, Marion Williamson, has declared for president, and she's the author of 12 books on spiritualism, and most notably, she's a spiritual advisor to have to bring the nation together. The spiritual advisor to Oprah Winfrey. Oh, well, I personally I don't have a spiritual advisor, I mean, so I think you guys could use one. All right, that's me and the, the next president. Uh, experts overall predicting AOC. As her mother said, her aspirations are to be president of the United States. I highly recommend you join the IDI. And there you go. There's the latest poll results. <laughs> All right. Yeah, all yours boy, to me. Charlie. Four more years. Hey. I'll be playing a short video. Yeah, so. boy, Charlie. All right. I hope you learned something. No, but it was fun. Well, here we go again. Another grammatically goofy round of, in a, of, of candidates who are incompetent, <coughs> don't know what they're doing, and as usual, a flood of your rather crazy nutcases going into our into our 2020 candidacy. We should, we should know that anything done by these Democrats is a little on the crazy side. I'm going to show you a little bit about why we need to support President Trump. Hang on, I'll start, I'll start again. Just give me a second here to start again. What we have is a bunch of obstructionists, a bunch of people standing in the way of the success of our country. And I'll show you, this video is straight from the Trump campaign website. And I think it's definitely worth repeating, you know, because our Trump, you need to get this real clear with what President Trump has been doing for our country. Democrats obstructing the media, attacking our president, career politicians standing in the way of success. But President Trump's plan is working. A million jobs created. More Americans working than ever before. Unemployment lowest since 2001. The stock market. All-time record highs, the strongest military in decades. The president's enemies don't want him to succeed, but Americans are saying, let President Trump do his job. I'm Donald Trump, and I approve his message. We've had one of the greatest, we've had one of the greatest job creation engines in history since Trump has become president. We've had record low unemployment, including amongst the minorities, and, you know, people of color. Our economy has hit some all-time highs. Our, um, the, our, trade, our trade is starting to be respected again. <laughs> President Trump's somewhat bombastic attitude has been resulting in that America is starting to be respected around the world again, instead of being trounced on by 
our so-called allies, China, who tends to take advantage of us through their ridiculous dumping, uh, some of these other foreign countries who we have open markets and they tariff our products, well, Mr. well, two can play at that game, and I think Trump, in getting these tariffs up, is sending a message to the world, we're not going to be taken advantage of anymore. If you remember in his inaugural speech, President Trump said, America first, as other countries should also be first. And then we negotiate as equals. He's renegotiating the bad, terrible deal that NAFTA had, and he's recrafting another deal with the American people and Canada and Mexico. He's recently dropped the steel tariffs that he started in order to shake them up and get their attention so we can renegotiate another deal. China has certainly been uh, somewhat nervous with us trying to, uh, you know, renegotiate the deal. They're actually starting to listen. So, Mr. Trump, maybe you are doing a good job in shaking these things up and draining the swamp. And, you know, many Amer you know, he has probably been one of the most harassed, one of the most vilified presidents in history. The Republicans haven't given him a chance. I'll uh, close on this one last ad about Trump. This is about his first days in office. We had this big and we're going to repeat this one more time so you get the message. And if these claims are true, I can endorse President Trump because he has had a number of accomplishments from his uh, website. And let's get it. Let's take a brief look at what the Republicans and President Trump have done. And you can readily see this if you go to his White House web pages. Is where I'm going to go now. And you know, there's a long list. Trump accomplishments. I if I okay. Here we go. It'll come up. And Trump has done a lot for our country. And we got to remember, manufacturing jobs have grown at the highest rate in more than three decades. Median household income has hit the highest level ever recorded. African-American unemployment has recently achieved the lowest rate ever recorded. Youth unemployment has recently hit the lowest rate in nearly half a century. Under, under my Trump administration, veterans' unemployment reached lowest levels in nearly 20 years. 95% of the U.S. manufacturers about, are optimistic about the future, the highest ever. I personally happen to know a, a lady who owns a manufacturing firm in Huntley, Illinois, and she is definitely pro-Trump because he has cutbacks on some of the burdensome regulations of business. He has helped her hire three or four more people because her business has been so good. And as a result of the tax cut bill, small businessmen will have the lowest top marginal tax rate in more than 80 years. He helped win the U.S. bid for the 2028 Summer Olympics in Los Angeles. He's opened Anwar and the Keystone XL and the Dakota Access Pipelines, which means Charlie or death trains for oil will be stopped because it should go to it. Oil should be transported under its safest mode in history, namely an oil pipeline. Yeah, it's like, you know, it doesn't leak into your yard. He has signed the right to try legislation and on and on and on. Even now, as we speak, his son Jared Kushner has started introducing some promises for immigration reform. 
And as we speak, too, he's uh, now finally starting to get some people involved with, uh, hey, let me put it this way. Trump is making America great again. Charlie, time for you to rebut. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, boy, Tim. I'll clap for you, Tim. This isn't even a challenge. Uh, you'll get more of a challenge in a minute once every bunch. This isn't even a challenge. All right, Charlie, you got net access? What kind of cracks? No. Get your PowerPoint back up here for you, Charlie. All right, get back up where you were left off on your PowerPoint. All right. Let's just take a look at what's going on here. Um, okay. Trump's Make America Great Again accomplishments. My list is a little different than yours. Good. Just a little bit differently. <laughs> Anyhow. Uh, I have links to articles regarding any of the following assertions in the following slides. And these are available on request. These are not my personal opinion, and they all have references uh, to published literature that you can review on your own should you have any questions regarding it. Anyhow, let's begin by what, what do we learn about the Trump administration? Amazingly, this is just recently, and he's been tracked for topping a new record among presidents of the United States. He's told over 10,000 total lies. <laughs> so, Tim, uh, yeah, you can go to that White House page, and how many of those on that page are part of the 10,000 lies. No, they're not lies, they're all yeah, true. They're he's not, got, they're true, right? He's got He just tells lies that. elsewhere, but on that page he tells the truth. Uh, right. Charlie, you can't, okay, you can't yeah. argue with statistics. He just changes, he changes. We have the largest so when it comes and most booming economy in I'm going to tell the truth, but everywhere else, I'm going to just make it up to suit whatever the circumstances are. As we say, Yeah, to okay, pal. And according to Trump, all the press are lies because they're lefties and they're out to get him. He said, this way he stays up all night doing these twittering, these two things to countermand. What kind of presidency is this? He stays up all night sending messages, trying to counter. But the press reports has very standards, and I'm sorry, there's no control in the media. There's many media outlets. The, the profession of journalism has very stringent standards for accuracy and fact-checking the truth. And you've given an administration, an agency of the government, which has no adherence and no inclination whatsoever. Look at these things that are coming out of there. You get a spin. The only thing you get out of this is bad news and a spin. Bad news and a spin each day. Uh, there's nothing that comes out of it. Uh, another thing regarding efforts regarding silence to criticisms of the campaign irregularities. Uh, some of the things they're coming up with is that, that we've heard about this uh, dossier. Uh, this is all allegedly, this, not only is the press out to get Trump, but the British and American intelligence services as well and allegedly the 13th floor of the State Department. So the only challenges they have are some kind of strange conspiracy theories here, okay? Uh, what's the real skitty here? Yeah, as a federal, former federal employee, uh, this was real good for the economy. Trump shut down the government. Cost us $6 billion. That's when I get a big chunk of money. Um, well, with that crisis, they won quite two billion off the real gross domestic product for each week. He kept the government shut down for more than a month for no particular purpose. Nothing was achieved. Uh, this is a big hit to the United States government. You mentioned there. Oh yes. Now the two things the president has to do is that he has domestic affairs 
and he has foreign and international relations. So let's see what improvements we have. Oh great, we are now friends with the world's worst dictator. But he's a communist though. You know, uh, this question about his, to what extent he is a communist. Uh, if, uh, the, um, the other thing is, this was in the news just right now, another achievement for foreign relations is, uh, is a possibility of a U.S.-Iran war uh, based on a false flag pretext of an incident done by the Secretary of State without the knowledge of the President. He has no idea. They even asked him, are we going to war? He wasn't certain. So that's why you see a picture here of this guy. He's, he's trying to turn over affairs because this is too fatiguing and too difficult to understand foreign affairs. He hasn't had any success at it whatsoever. So he's turning it over even to this guy who's considered something of a little dangerous. Uh, another thing, improvement of foreign relations. How great. We are now with, <laughs> we allegedly have greater relations with the Soviet Union now that they're running the United States and we've become a satellite country or territory of Russia. Uh, another thing is um, regarding foreign affairs, absolutely, this is really serious. Absolutely nothing has been done today to stem the uh, involvement of the Soviet Russians in the, in the voting process. I'm surprised the Libertarians don't jump on this issue. Um, uh, regarding our other allies, let's see the other achievements in foreign affairs. Uh, here we see the European and the Japanese don't even, no, no very positive opinion of Mr. Trump's uh, things right there. Now one of the things, let's see how effective he is as president. Amazing enough, this is for many reports on this, is that he effectively doesn't do any work. He simply doesn't do any work. Uh, he spends a, a, all day watching television and tweeting. Oh, here, you know, some of the things that's kind of important to people is their health care, you know? Especially when people get older. You, what is the Republican health care plan? They repealed the Democratic plan, but they didn't put one in place. How can you replace? This is the health care. It's like, you just don't go without it. And they said, well, we'll do it maybe later, a couple of years from now. This is absolutely do. The people should not tolerate it. You can't have this. Uh, you can't have a, a break in that. So amazingly enough, not only do they have no nationwide health care plan, they actually went to damage the one redeeming feature of the Affording Care Act that everybody just agreed with was that the insurance companies could not exclude people on the basis of pre-existing conditions, which means about 50% of the people in the United States were not eligible for health insurance. And the Republicans are actually spent, they had federal employees assigned to get this taken they can get rid of it. Uh, that's unbelievable. They made a concerted effort. <laughs> now we're getting into some of the things that are going to, uh, we're talking about the impeachment and indictment. Uh, I like this one. This just goes back some time. Trump actually was wondering about and inquiring among the legal department. Uh, the White House as if he could pardon himself of crime. <laughs> <laughs> and it brings back to the French statement of l'état c'est moi, I am the state. <laughs> uh, the, regarding uh, the cabinet, uh, Trump promised to drain the swamp and then he launched an administration second to none in conflict of interest, self-dealing, plea deals and convictions. That the, the incredible people he brought in. I only, it's rare that you can find one that's maybe that a lady in transportation, but even she's nothing to say about. Like that guy that wanted, that guy in charge of homelessness in the United States, 
fix up his office to $36,000 or $39,000. The guy in charge of homeless programs. Okay, so let's see about the economy. Let's see who benefited by these accomplishments. CEO pay soared while employee wages decreased. Oh, that's good. That's a lot better. So meaning the rich got richer and the poor got poorer. Uh, and then they, they said, well, that isn't good enough. We're going to have to pass a tax cut because we want the rich getting even, even more rich. So we're going to pay a tax cut, a permanent tax cut for the rich, a two-year tax cut for the poor. You only get two years, folks. Oh, let's see here. Let's happen if you happen to work in a restaurant or clean an office. Increase social stratification. The typical worker in American wages fell $16.80 or 1.9% during the, the year. Wages actually went down for those for whom wages are crucial. Uh, just not long ago, in response to this fact, what did the response of the Trump administration? The top economic advisor, Larry Caldwell, said he doesn't believe that the federal government should set a minimum wage. It's a terrible idea. Oh, that's great. Uh, by the way, in terms of helping you out, I, unless you're one of these people, but the top 1%, by the way, increased by 150% more in, in their wages, uh, where the bottom got about one-fifth. Regarding the government itself, it's amazing that the government keeps in operation. It was only the career federal employees that got it, kept it going amidst this chaos at the top. Uh, and then the, the, the president rewarded the career federal employees by issuing three executive law, the orders abolishing their unions. These were uh, challenged in court, and all three in total were thrown out. That's what I mean. He couldn't even issue an executive order that could make it through the courts. In any way, in not even one portion of it, did any of those three get through the courts. And not very hard. Our attorneys are on it right away. I read them right away. I go, these are unconstitutional. This is, this is worthless. This is this is kind of product you're getting out of this. They had they had issues with that Muslim ban. They can't write very, very, I've dealt with executive orders. They were involved in running them, but you, you know, they, they are, you, to write one that is totally thrown out, not only one, but this instance three, in totality, is some kind of record. <laughs> it's rarely that they're even questioned. Almost never, I can't even, I said, when has executive order been challenged? And I could not think of one let alone having three thrown out entirely. That's amazing. How do you do it? By a lot of here, I'll tell you another thing a lot of people don't know about this. They tried to keep silence by silencing federal employees. Certain words were not allowed in emails. You could not use the term resistance. Uh, they had way to, federal employees had ways of getting around this. Uh, but this is ridiculous. This is amazing. They tried to curtail the speech of federal employees. <laughs> uh, we're almost done. Uh, the here's another. This one you this one you have never heard about. But over the past 19 months or two years or so, Trump has fired or threatened nearly a dozen federal employees associated with the inquiry into what he calls a witch hunt. So you know he's threatened people here. Uh, oh, his trade policy, Timmy, you were talking about? That's really good, you know? Like, let's have an increase in all the goods that we purchase, that people making that, that minimum wage. Uh, I understand we had a bailout to farm, $15 billion. He destroyed the one industry that's a success, the, the picture of the world. It's American agriculture it has to be bailed out to the two. How could you destroy America? the one industry that's doing well, that the rest of the world is envious of? The one industry is American agriculture. He managed to wreck it. 
That's pretty amazing. He's a destroyer. <laughs> there you go. You want TV, folks? The last page of factory closed down, you know. Um, here, regarding overtime, yeah, they actually changed the labor laws so that the employer can cheat you out of overtime. So you're losing money, you want to add that up, how much money you lost. And regarding the environment, oh, he pulled out of the very tree. Yeah, yeah, you know what happens when a pipeline blows up in your backyard, Timmy? You think somebody's going to come along and scoop up that oil? You're going to do it yourself, I guess. And it's going to do real good for your garden, oil. Yeah, crude oil does a lot of things for your flower bed. Let me tell you here. Here's some other things. You want clean air? He said the power plants can burn and make as much soot as you want. It's okay with me. Burn, burn, baby, burn. The EPA chief, he pointed here, says, oh, global warming, so don't worry about that. It won't, it won't be an issue for another 50 or 75 years. Well, this is great. Um, here, another thing, a lot of people are, are suddenly find themselves excluded from the labor laws. How much do you think that costs people? How many people get fired without just cause? Do you think that costs people anything? What's the figure about that? Here's another thing I've been following. He told everyone in during the campaign, there's going to be one billion dollars for the infrastructure, support for trains and public transit. You know how much money has been allocated? And since the administration for public transit, exactly zero. I don't need it. Nothing. It was the Democrats that came in and said, look at with the House, now we're going to have some plans. And they put one together for them. We're almost done here. There's a thing in the government called a fitness for duty. It's not often there, but anyhow, according to the magazine here, there hasn't been a major party candidate less fit. This is amazing. Well, this is a mainline publication. This is not fruity, fruity press. That it's amazing that in the history of the United States that a candidate less fit to the presidency in American history. A new record. Uh, he refuses to see, recognize the oversight of Congress, skirting outside the law. Uh, they know what uh, uh, scandals to investigate. And now, get this, I like this one, that um, he's actually claiming he was spied on. Well, don't have meetings with Russian spies. That's simple. Don't have a meeting. They even have a photograph of it. A whole bunch of Russians are there. They're talking about back channel communications. And then they say, well, somebody reported this. This is a campaign that is dealing with Russian spies. Well, I think that's something that certain behaviors sometimes come to the attention of the government. I think that's one of them. I mean, as a federal employee, I lunch with some Russians, you think I can do Yeah, now here, Tim, you can probably stand up. I'm done here almost with the other Trump supporters. Here you can see them. Uh, you want to build their wall. Anyhow, the, this is the only direction for the country to go, is to the left. Yeah, all right. That's yeah, it, thank you. And our boy, Charlie. All right. What you just saw is the main reason why the Democrats aren't going to win this upcoming election. The only thing Charlie had kept saying was criticism after criticism after criticism of what is going wrong. <laughs> President Trump did bring the economy up and it's booming. President Trump has passed the largest tax cut in history and has made a very pro-business dealing. And even with the rise of CEO pay, the base pay of many workers has also gone up. About the delivery of uh, fossil fuels, you know, there's one thing that you may not know about in the Republican platform. President Trump and the Republican Party are actively supporting 
the role of nuclear power in changing our energy future and getting off of oil. There have been several companies now, one in the United States uh, called Live Energy, a couple in Canada are actively promoting the use of safe and effective nuclear power through the use of molten salt reactors. Two, there may not be an infrastructure bill and may not be a lot of other things, but a lot of it's because he doesn't get any support from Congress. The Democrats have won, done nothing but want to get him out of office since he came into office. If you remember, even a week before the inauguration at this very, at this very venue, when me and Paul were talking about what President could, Trump could do to be a successful president, there were several rebuttals already about impeaching him. The point is, is that you guys aren't giving President Trump a chance. He's a businessman. He's not a politician. He said so when he was campaigning. Of course he's going to have a little bit of a learning curve as president. But at the same time, he's learning how to become president of the United States. We don't see him scrambling off on his Twitter account like he used to. He's starting to be on script a little more. And he's starting to learn how to be a good statesman. In the art of the deal, he talks about shaking things up and negotiating. Well, he's doing just that. He's shaking a number of countries up, and they're con giving us concessions to get us to be supportive. What does Asian We shall see all this happen, and he will be successful upon the next completion of the American election when the country decides to throw out these loony Democrats with their Green New Deal, their liberal left reforms, and their cockamamie schemes for promoting the welfare state under socialism. I support President Trump, and I agree with this message. Charlie, let's go to questions. Get up here and moderate, Andy, because this is going to get... There's going to be some blows. Although I actively don't support Trump, there's a lot that I do support about the Republican agenda. And boy, are we going to go at it. Do you have any pipelines in your backyard? All right, ready, Charlie? It's either pipelines or trains, Charlie. Which is it? Pipelines. All right. It's a false choice. Andy, when you get up here, let's get these questions started. Uh, when you're addressing your questions, you might consider one thing that neither uh, of our speakers talked about tonight. Tim just said it's, it's either pipelines or trains. Well, it's neither. The trains hauling oil and coal and the pipelines piping oil are being supplanted by giant solar and wind farms all over the world. And those are cheaper than any kind of pipeline and any kind of train hauling coal or oil. All right. So that is not known yet to apparently either one of our speakers. Let's have some questions. All right. We're adjourned. All right, ready with questions? <laughs> no questions. Okay, come on. <laughs> All right. He's got a question. Uh, yes. I, I should know this, but uh, I played ignorance. The way he got, I'd say, uh, Trump was never elected in an election uh, because the majority, even as an un unsavory character like Hillary Clinton, she got three million more votes than he did. So now the question is, uh, you know, a guy like that, you would think he would try to do everything good for the people so that they would elect him by the majority vote next time. But he's doing things against, so much against the pe common people, and he wants to get it reelected. A guy like that, he's like, remember Harold Washington, he said about Mary Daly II, he, he was the first time he ran against them, he said, hey, a guy like this, Mayor Daly II, running for mayor of Chicago, if his name was not Richard Daly, it would be considered a joke. 
Now, the same thing with this uh, unsavory character we have in the White House. He was elected by a group of Republicans behind closed doors. Isn't that how the, uh, what do you call it, the Electoral College works? So in other words, it's like this guy Guaido. They say, oh, he's, he's we never elected president of Venezuela. See, he's like Trump. See, that's the kind of guys that the capitalists okay. create. So what's your question? Was Trump ever elected by the people? Well, no. look at the Electoral College, which is how our Constitution elects presidents of the United States. Trump won the election according to the processes set forth in the American Constitution under the Electoral College. He is our president, legitimately. Do you favor abolishing the Electoral College or keeping it? Me, personally, I'd like to see more of a representative system in place. But if we're talking Trump, he is elected by the Constitution, by the sum forth, by the rules set forth in the Electoral College. And thank God our country accepted him as president, and thank God he is doing something to make America great again. Uh -huh. I have a question for you. All right. <clears throat> I was going to answer that. All right, come you, on up, you, Charlie, you, and answer you, 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 that. Come on up and answer All right, Charlie. All right. I'll ask you a question. The, uh, the, the, the thing pertains to the Electoral College and the direct election of people to office. The four founding fathers were very fearful of the masses, or the mob, as they called it. Um, so they avoided direct election. They also restricted who could vote, which actually I think is a good idea. I think you should you should have some qualifications for voting. Uh, the, because you have people that are voting for frivolous, unsubstantial reason, and their votes are equal to those who are voting, who are taking it very seriously. Now, they didn't want to have direct election that's why senators at the time were elected by state legislatures. There was no direct election of senators. Uh, they thought it would be a check on the masses uh, so that you would vote for electors. Now the idea was, was that the electors had some independence in who, how they voted that. If you wish, it was a special election of electors who then would decide who would, should be president of the United States. So you're voting for people to represent you in the second election, in the Electoral College. That's who you're voting for. Now, direct election has come in because we of technology and so forth. Uh, I don't know if that's necessarily an improvement. Uh, most people seem to think it is. Um, the idea was that you were going to have qualified people chosen by their peers or their area to choose the president, and the end result would be a better president. Yeah, give me a minute. But now it's just a perfunctory kind of exercise where they go in and they vote however they're told, and that's it, and it's over with, you know. So it's not really fulfilling its purpose, its original purpose is that independent people got together to choose who the president of the United States would be. Be like he would choose somebody in this room to be our, our electoral representative. I have a question for either one of you. Then fine. Yeah, uh, sure. you, question. Maybe you, can, you talk about the electoral college, uh, get, you know, give, giving Trump more votes. Are you familiar with Greg Pallas's work on voter theft? Uh, I am not affected with this work. Well, let me just say that there's massive amount of evidence that those states where the electors were able to vote for Trump, the vote, uh, massive amounts of Democratic ballots were not counted and were changed uh, in certain states to give more of a Republican majority of votes in those states. Trump got elected with massive voter fraud. That only about a quarter of the people in the country actually voted for him. And if the votes were counted properly without being thrown in the trash, uh, was 
what they call it, provisional ballots. There was voter fraud all over the country, and they're priming to do it again. That's what the report, report this whole thing about Russian voter uh, interference, it's a big circus to hide the real voter suppression that Dem honest Democrats can't get elected because the Republicans are ca calling uh, counting the voting Eddie, machine. I find That's your it. claims to be utterly preposterous. They aren't my claims, Tim. Don't keep saying All right, that. well, maybe I'm not your claims. Evidence. Don't do that anymore. I, I don't, don't accept I me into this. I don't no. accept your forensic evidence no. because of the contentiousness of this election. My apologies, Andy, I didn't mean it to not you, but was well, not my opinion. I don't agree with the opinions that the elections were rigged. The main reason I believe that is because of the contentiousness of the election. Surely by now, we would have seen some major media reports on election fraud, not just from the you know, so-called internet uh, goofball sites, but we would have seen mainstream reporting on it. Just like I disagree, with your findings on the insider job on 9-11. I have not yet seen the major evidence that's going to preclude that 11 guys did it. I mean, that, that it was only 11 guys that, blew, that threw some planes into a building. To me, it seems utterly more reasonable that the planes were hijacked and, and flown into the buildings, and the buildings came down, than to have some deep state government conspiracy on asbestos claims. Now, as far as uh, Trump being elected, it was a legitimate election. And if there had been fraud involved, I'm sure by now we would have seen much more graphic evidence. Mueller went into this and other things with his report. And if you noticed, Trump was clear, okay? Uh, Charlie, you want to address any of this? Well, all 50 secretaries of state responsible for the elections in their state have submitted their reports, and there was no challenge or question about any of them to date. Okay, Andy. By any formal body, by Come anybody on up, that they're. Come on up. All 50 secretaries of state have verified the elections are over. And, and, and concluded without issue. And there's no evidence. The, the, other, the only thing about this is, there's no voter fraud. There's some efforts at voter suppression, which is making it a little difficult to register, making it difficult to change your voter if you, if you move or something like that. One of the sad things are the Republican Party is not gaining demographically nationwide. They're not growing. And the only thing left for them as a party to stay viable is to cut back the number of people voting. Because if a lot of people vote, they lose. It's just like Bernie kept saying, Bernie Sanders kept saying, if Democrats vote in large numbers, we win. And the Democrats know that demographically, their overall participation in is shrinking. Fewer and fewer people identify with them, and so they try these maneuvers. They're all skirting within the law, but you know they're as close as they can come with with restricting voting. Um, as many measures as they can put in your place. Uh, if they'll nail things at home, and if it's returned, the people disqualified from voting, things like that, all kinds of little tricks you can pull. Believe you me, there's a lot of stuff you can do. Overall fraud, there's no evidence to date. I wasn't talking yeah. about that, Charlie. I was talking about what you're talking about, scrubbing people from the polls, suppressing the vote. You know, you don't have the proper ID, you can't vote today. All that kind of well, stuff. Well, voter ID is the only... the Democratic vote. Voter ID is the only thing um, that uh, has been, and I know the arguments on that. Actually, I don't know why somebody doesn't have any kind of ID. I guess that's voter suppression. That's the only one that I could think of. But now there's voter suppression 
he has not, I don't believe, I don't know, some efforts in the South perhaps, but um, there may have been some. All over the country. No, no, no. It happened in a lot of No, 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 that's not been the case. They tried. Not enough to change the election. All right. Well, next question. Can I let somebody, Andy? Sit. All right, Sid. Well, what they're doing is cross-checking. For instance, you have a name in Illinois, John M. Smith. There's another name in Virginia, John A. Smith. They say, oh, John M. Smith cannot vote because he's voting in Virginia. That's what they've done. And they erased so many people off the rolls by doing that method, method what they call cross-checking. So there was, there was fraud, definitely. So basically what you're saying then is that the election was called because of, there was a, of the decimation of the voter rolls, am I correct? They tried that in one place. No, it tried happened all over, over the, country, the country, Charlie. Quit saying that. There's 20 states, they have voter, scrubbing Democratic okay, voters, yeah, right. more people than Democrats, African Americans, all right, we're scrubbed the, by the millions all over the country. Right. And that's documented. All right, Mike. Raj. Uh, I have a some question, but for you one for him. Would you like to hire an erratic manager for your business? Would I hire an erratic manager for my business? Yes, right. Okay, let me ask Charlie. Charlie, do you, do you know what is your uh, hearing? Yeah. yeah. Can you tell me what is democratic platform that is acceptable to, let's say, 75% of democrats? Okay, let's get up to the mic and answer the question, Charlie. What is, can you repeat this? What is the Democratic platform? That's 75 percent people can agree. Okay, Charlie, can Yeah, the standard. Up to the mic, Charlie, please. The, the standard platform is issued at the convention. And no one's ever, ever had any issue with it. Can you give me some it. ideas? What? Can you give me some ideas? Of the platform? Oh, there's uh, positions on everything under the sun. I know. That's and not it's not That's been not controversial. The parties get together before they vote on the candidates, and they put together a, a basic thing. We're going to try to improve work. We're going to try to, to improve the environment. Now, the only contention is, if you compare it to the other political party, which is against, let's say, there's a clear distinction, they're against environmental rules. And they say, or, you know, they're for tax, they're against, it's a basic Republican, or the abortion issue may be a difference. But the parity platforms in many respects. Let me ask you a specific question. There's not been an issue, I, I don't recollect the Democratic platform last okay, time. Okay, what do they, what do they think about uh, International agreement and a sanctity of international agreement. It doesn't matter what the platform says because the candidates, in essence, put forward whatever position they want. And they don't care what it says. They will basically try to follow it or be, work with it, but they don't care. Now, many candidates don't issue positions. Like Mr. Trump. Mr. Trump never issued a position on the infrastructure. All we know about his position were views con that they secured through interviews by the media because they were too lazy or stupid. They had position papers. Now you have other people in this campaign do like Hillary Clinton on that same topic published a four or five page position on that same issue in detail which even showed written by someone very knowledgeable on the topic that gave what they, she planned to do and that's the difference what you find now some of these candidates like I showed you the uh, the one fellow 
has no positions articulated. He's just running for president. Another one, if you look at their website, I looked at some of them, they don't have anything except how to get money and maybe how to buy a t-shirt. You don't find anything. I have a question. She has a question. Have you have the next question. I mean, hello. You can go and take my question. I have a question. Just a minute. Just a minute. I have a question. Why is it that the they picked Hillary Clinton over anyone else because they knew she wasn't very popular. What, what could they do now in yeah. 2020 to help? You mean they, she was chosen by delegates to the convention? No, but I'm just saying she was really unpopular though. Well, why she was they? not, and she won the primaries. She got more delegates, and so why can you say somebody wins all the primaries, gets all the record number of delegates, and then you turn around and say she's unpopular. She won. She won. She was popular. That's how you win. She won. D, it's a poll. They, we don't even, all the states have primaries now. It, it used to be they had conventions where they choose delegates. Now it's primaries. All the states voted. And Hillary delegates got you elected. Know? So she was, it, the only way she got elect, chosen, the candidate, was through popular victory. But what can he do in 2020 to make sure he doesn't win? What? What can he do in 2020 to make sure Trump doesn't win again? I what would, I would say get you know, rid of this primary process. I thought the Democrats made a mistake. They, they made a big thing about there were two types of delegates. They were those that were seasoned people who worked for the campaign, the regular Democrats, they call it. And then you have people that show up and vote. And I don't know why people who aren't a member of the Democratic Party, have, do nothing for the Democratic Party, do nothing to get candidates elected to the Democratic Party, can then show up and choose who our candidate is. That's absurd. And then people say, oh no, we should have all popularly elected delegates, even though they had done nothing to establish themselves as they're not even members of the Democratic Party. Are you talking super delegates, John? Yeah. And now they also said, now this is the amazing thing, they actually want, they said, no, you can't have super delegates, so that it used to be like the party was rewarded by getting their candidates elected, the legislature, and so forth. That's how you won superdelegates, by getting your people elected. It was an incentive to get people elected. Well, can you shut up? You got a question well, Yeah, I do. You're next. All right. Uh, my question, no, my question is this. How do you explain that there's all these Democratic candidates running for president? Explain it. What? Explain it. Why are the candidates? No, no, why? Explain it to me. Why are there so many Democratic so many candidates people running for president? Because they convinced themselves that they should be. There was an article published on that yesterday that gave a good analysis. Oh. Well, it said they, they, you, you get it's big money involved. A couple billion dollars is involved. Well, and if you raise money for your campaign, you get to keep the money after you drop out. These oh, guys, so it's good, these guys it's good, are it's good money. Just it's good it's money. Good money. Okay. To jump well, the I gave you. Wait a minute. Why do you think it was just Democrat? The beginning slide showed you that the previous time it was all Republicans who were running. Same thing. I'm talking about right now. It, well, it, that's why I showed the contrast. Last time around, they were all Republicans because we pretty much had selected their candidate, the Democrats, and now, so now the Democrats are wide the fields wide open. And it's going to attract more people. I don't know about this thing about making money like that. You know, if you're going to solicit campaign contributions, you don't need to run, for, declare yourself. I've never heard that before. You, you can you, you, uh, collect in a general way. But, you make a lot of money. No, that's not accurate. You can collect plenty of campaign on your own. You don't need to. 
Come on, there's, there's, 12, there's 12 million people are elected to office. Okay, I'm going to run for president. There's 453, 500, 500, 600, and you have hundreds of candidates that running for office. You think they're all going to run for president? You got 12? Uh, it's, 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 you, you don't, you know, presidential campaigning. You've got to cross the whole country for a year or two. This is not like, oh, I'm going to give a speech once so. a And that guy's been to every county in Iowa. There's got to be 50 of them. This is the hard, this is the work. Okay, i tell you what, I'm, I'm, very, I'm withdrawing, I'm not going to run. No, I don't know what that means. All right. We're going to ask our next question. No. Yeah, yeah question. Are there, is there, are there any people running against Trump now? Well, according to our libertarian candidate, person who was here, you know, that's a good question, and let me take a look on the internet so we can find yeah. out real quick. One guy. Hey, one guy in the East Weld. announced his uh, candidacy. Is that William Weld? I'm yeah. not sure. It might be. Uh, yeah, former uh, governor of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Well, we got Republican presidential candidates right here. There's 250 people who declare for 1,500 over 1,500 people declare for presidency of the United States. And some of these people go by the name of like Jesus. <laughs> uh, don't vote for me and something. Uh, oh, how many are legitimate candidates? Uh, we have a list here okay. up on the internet and it says meet the Republicans likely to challenge likely. Trump. Yeah. I do know we have no, that's not, that's, that's an article on speculation. Nothing. All I know is that it's Trump for the Republicans. He may have a few challengers. Um, here we go. Do you think he will lose? Tim? What? Do you think he will lose? William, well, if, yeah. if, he, if he got in it. All right, hang on here. I don't see any purpose for those campaigns. You know, I am not able to find the answer right away, but I do know this. There needs to be some Republican people in there to make sure that the party can at least, uh, you know, get get our uh, elections going. Personally, though, Trump has had the economy booming. He's making a number of things that have been pro-business. Jobs have been in the best thing, and I think he will propose immigration reform. And again, it's well, only when the Republicans win both the House, the Senate, and the White House in 2020, and the Republican, the Democrats will be solely ousted because the Republican principles will prove themselves finally under a <laughs> under a firm Republican administration that will see, despite or spite President Trump. We'll see the economy growing. We'll see a lot of our trade relations improving. And with the victory of Republicans, whether despite or spite President Trump, we will see America growing in prosperity. All right, Charlie, the, come on uh, and rebut me, man. No, I just want to ask you, the economy started improving in 2010. And you said it was according to Republican principles. Republicans weren't in office. Yes. The straight line of the economy began with the recovery because the Democrats inherited what? A mess. And by the time I gave you the thing that Elizabeth Warren was working on reforming Wall Street, we went through that whole period of the foreclosures of all the homes millions of people lost because of Republican policies and 2010 all the charts go anywhere on the internet the recovery and development this is not Republican how do you figure it's Republican because 2010? the Democrats started adhering 
to true capitalistic principles that are formulated by the Republican Party to make sure that the economy is booming. They, they had too many restrictions on the economy under Obama, which is why it was only growing in a trickle. Why? Once Trump got elected and he took the shackles off, that's when we really started seeing the thing. If you look under Obama's administration, you know, it was stagnant. We were growing little by little. But now, you see help wanted signs everywhere. You see people begging for help. You see many more jobs opening up. That's absolutely not true. It's a straight line, the graphs. Straight line. All right, 2010. <laughs> yes. I want to uh, uh, change to an international issue. You know, I am a witness of World War II. I saw the Nazis come in my house, take my father to take him down towards Sparta to execute him by a firing squad. Thank God the officer spoke English and my dad spoke English and the German officer let my dad come back alive the same day. In the meantime, the house was burned down. They torched our house. And we never did anything to them. But the people that saved us was the Russians. And even now, which is not even Soviet Russia, when I look at Mr. Lavrov there, the foreign minister of Russia, I see a man of credibility, a man of moral stature. What's your question? We don't have anybody like that. So now, the thing that bothers me, because I am grateful to the Russians, they saved us. The capitalist Nazis came to kill us, and the Russians saved us. Now, and World War II was not Nazis and all that, it was a capitalist war of aggression to destroy communism, and they killed 27 million Russians. Really? Everything else was a uh, sideshow. Really? Really? What's your question? Do you have a question? The capitalists killed 27 million Russians? Okay, so uh, Hitler was their uh, agent. Now, it was a epic battle between communism and capitalism, and the communists won. But they lost 27 million people, and I was almost one of them that died in World War II two times, not once, from hunger and diseases. You so know, now, what? let me finish with this. Go ahead. When I look at the Russians, I don't believe that the Russians did anything to meddle in the 2016 election. Because uh, uh, what sure. do they have oh, to gain? They have two unsavory capitalist uh, warmongers, Hillary and Trump. And which is proven by Trump now. He's, Trump is surrounding Russia with more military forces, with more bombers, with more uh, closer and closer to the borders of Russia. So this guy, he, he's, just a, he's just an agent, uh, just like Hillary. Let me answer this. Well, let, right. let me no, no, sir. you've had enough. This so is going on to that. You ought to, wait a minute, I'm let sorry. Let me, let me, the, uh, let me give a rebuttal. You no, no. give it your rebuttal. Just, we've been heard enough. Post. It's a Listen, it's a no, plan. hey, call him out of order, will you? No, I, it's I, I, said, go on out. No, I, I gotta said, finish. Two yeah. words. You had no, you had enough. I'm That's it. You're you're over. Over. You're you're right. You don't know what you're so talking about. Stupid. Hillary Clinton was hated by the Russians and Putin. They were reported, all the countries in Europe were reporting the Russians, mucking up the yeah. elections. Let's play me Don't yell into the mic, Charlie. All right. The other countries were reporting it. So what are you talking about? They hated Hillary Clinton. She was Secretary of State. Now do some background. They didn't. They were not the same. They were not the same candidates. They were not the same candidates. Trump was not regarded the same thing. Trump was under the employ of the Russians already. That's that's nonsense. Nonsense? No. Why did they have a meeting? How much was invested in Russia? Who do you think saved him from money? It's a false flag. Who do you think Biden, really Trump, there was no U.S. bank, really there was no U.S. bank would loan money to Trump because they it was, was a, a false goofball. flag operation. So he had, no other, no, he had no other way to get money but through the Russians, the Russian mob. You didn't know that? You didn't know that? I'm in your race believing that stuff. Believing that stuff. Deutsche Bank? You're, 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 Deutsche Bank is giving over the records. They're trying to stop it. All right, Charlie. 
That's what I mean. Yeah, let's open it's it up. Silly. Let's open I think it up. what we're going to do now <laughs> is open it up for rebuttals. I know we've all had uh, some some good uh, quotation of views, even me having to eat a little crow on supporting Trump. Hope I did an all right job with it. All right, how many people we got for rebuttals tonight? We're going to go with about, what do you think, any six minutes each or five? Good, good six. Okay, we'll go with six minutes each. We'll let our first speaker come on up and let's get the rebuttals going. Hey, you can go on from here, Andy. Please take the time. We have internet access if you need it. Give the most articulate rebuttal you've ever given in your life. <laughs> you got all kinds of material to work with here from both sides. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, with regard to the gentleman who said, well, the, the, everything is other than capitalism and communism by the sideshow. That's the biggest crock of horse shit I've ever heard in my life. What, you're saying the massacre of the Jews was a sideshow? What, you're saying that the assault on human freedom by the Nazis was a sideshow? Hell no. Western civilization's very existence was at stake because of Adolf Hitler and his allies in Italy and Japan. They had to be crushed and stopped. And by God, they were by the, with the leadership of the United States and the assistance of Britain and the Russians. So I don't want to hear some jive from anybody else about how, uh, well, it was just a war of capitalism. No, the hell it was. And you, I'm sorry, I think your views are warped. If, you, if the gentleman who said that really believes the Russians are so great, why doesn't he go to Russia and live there? That's number one. Uh, number two, with regard to the gentleman who has said that, gee, isn't America becoming great again? Well, yeah, he, did you watch the dictator's playbook when that ran on PBS? Did you watch the stories of, of Mussolini? And um, they didn't do Hitler, I was surprised at that. But they did Mussolini, they did Franco and several other people. Mussolini started the whole thing. Let's make Italy great again. Let's revive the Roman Empire. And Hitler said the same thing. Let's make Germany great again. Germany awake. So, again, I think that's a crock of horseshit, plain and simple. And I don't think the Democrats are fated to lose the election. Trump won only through a fluke in the Electoral College the last time. Hillary won the popular vote. And, and um, I have no doubt that, in particular, with the southern states and elsewhere passing all these anti-abortion resolutions, this is already starting to piss people off and mobilize the women to turn out as they did in the last election. I think you're going to see a Democratic Senate in the next election, and I think probably a Democratic President as well. My dream ticket, Joe Biden for President, and Kamala, Kamala Harris for Vice President. I agree with you. Good. He I'm glad, glad to hear that. Is he? Oh, he's in Trump. We've got four minutes left. Still got time. Yes, I know I do. I'm trying to marshal my thoughts here. Think of something. <laughs> well, thank you. Tell us who you support. For Democrat, the, 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 why do you support Biden? Me, pardon? Why do you support Biden? I support Biden because when Donald Trump, who's, in, who's incompetent, who's a bum, who's the worst president this country has ever had, I thought that George W. Bush would go down as the worst president. Yeah. Then along came Donald Trump, and George Bush now seems, compared to Trump, like a statesman, a genius compared, uh, compared to Donald Trump. Um, Bush at least reads books. Uh, Trump doesn't. Uh, by, and Trump, uh, or excuse me, um, Bush at least read his briefing papers. He didn't shoot the messengers who brought him bad news. And while he wasn't smart enough to make all the decisions he was faced with, he had the sense to know what he didn't know. And he had people on his staff who were smart enough to make those decisions, and he delegated those decisions to them and let them make the decisions. Biden, he's going to leave a huge mess when he when he leaves office, which I trust will be on January the 20th, uh, 2021. And when he does, we're going to need an experienced hand on the tiller to clean up the mess. And that's why I'm for Joe Biden, who's clearly got the experience over everybody else who's running. And what's more, not all of us fall into the pocket of some of the people on the far left, although the following should be noted, I don't think they're socialists. 
And I think that's a stock argument that's been repeated in the past 60 years, 70 years, 80 years, since Franklin Roosevelt did things like pass Social Security, which was condemned at the time as being socialism. Or when Earl Warren, who then was the governor of California, was lying ill in a hospital bed with a long illness. And he wondered, who's going, if I'm lucky, if I were a blue collar worker like my father, but Matt Warren had been a mechanic for the Southern Pacific Railroad. Earl Warren wondered, if I were a mechanic like my dad, who would pay my hospital bills? More importantly, who would take care of my family? And so he drafted a very modest medical plan, which wouldn't sound like much today, but it was more than most people were doing at the time, and certainly more than any other Republican. And when he got out of the hospital, he vetted it before the California Medical Association in a speech. Big mistake. They all started hollering, socialism, socialism. Earl Warren said up to the California legislature anyway, well, the CMA got busy with Whitaker and Baxter, California's big political consulting firm <coughs> that did business under the name of Campaigns Incorporated. And they were able to defeat the bill in the California legislature, much to Earl Warren's bitter anger. So, sorry folks, social to holler socialism in a Democrat, that's one of the biggest turnoffs I can Imagine. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. Next. Six minutes, comrade Sid. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I was being facetious. Let's Go talk ahead. about uh, what he's talking about the Second World War. What happened was that Germany was the lowest rung on the lung, on the uh, on the ladder, as far as uh, as colonies and things of that nature, and they're very highly industrialized, only second to the United States, and they needed colonies. So what happened is they invaded Czechoslovakia, they invaded Poland, invaded all these countries, and the United States and Britain didn't do a damn thing about it. And the reason why Churchill said at the end, let Soviet Russia and Nazi Germany fight each other to the death, and then we'll come in there and take over both countries. That's what Churchill said. So it was an imperialist war, definitely an imperialist war, for different uh, markets, raw materials, and cheap labor, like all imperialist wars are. And the, the thing, I, I'm going to vote for uh, Bernie Sanders because he has a long history of fighting for the poor, pe poor people. And he's not just coming out because the other people that say, well, they're progressive, so forth and so on, you have to look back on their politics to see if they really are progressive. Most of them just say they are because they want to get the, the vote that Bernie Sanders got. That's what they're after. Most of them are strictly opportunists wanting to get become president because once they uh, get, get to be president after that, they all become millionaires. There's not a president that ever lived in, in the contemporary world that didn't become a millionaire. Harry Truman. And uh, even him. No, he didn't and, uh, him. and what happens is they make speeches, and they're paid $100,000 for making a speech, things of that nature. And they all just to be out, all of them become president. They're nothing but opportunists. That's all they are. At least Bernie Sanders is not an opportunist. He's looking out for the poor people. I don't agree with his foreign policy. I think his foreign policy stinks because he's supporting this guy that's running for president, they've never even been in, in the runoff in Venezuela. Nobody even heard of him. And all of a sudden, he gets in there and says, I'm president, and the United States recognized he's the president. He's never voted in. And he says, and the United States, all oh, 50 countries are for him. Who are these 50 countries? They're satellites of the United States or Britain. That's what they are. They're flunkies for the United States and Britain. That's the ones that uh, 
said that Venezuela has to be invaded. Now, what's happening with this crazy Trump, he's got something like 120,000 troops waiting to invade Iran. The guy is nuts. And the same thing with this John Bolton. He's nothing but a damn fascist. And, they, and, uh, and Trump is nothing but a damn fascist. Anybody that believes that Trump is progressive and doing us good is, is, isn't looking to reality. He's up in the cloud somewhere, not looking to reality at all. The Trump is nothing but an opportunist wanting to make more and more money. The thing is that Trump wanted to build the uh, Trump Tower in Moscow, and he had to get money in order to invest in different things, but nobody would give him money because they went bankrupt about four times. So what he did is go to Russia and get money from them. But as far as the election is concerned, and the Russians uh, intervene in our election, that is ridiculous, totally ridiculous. The United States every day of the week is, is involving himself in other countries. If you look what Edward Snowden brought out, the United States is, an, is uh, spying on every other country, trying to influence their elections. It comes out now that they say Venezuela doesn't belong to Maduro, who was elected by about 65 or 70 percent over the other uh, uh, people that were running. And when this guy Guiano came out and tried to get uh, the officers to revolt against uh, Maduro, he went in front of a camp where the officers were, and he says, come out, come with me. Nobody even showed up. Not one person showed up that was in the army. And what the Maduro government does when it has money, it gives the money to the poor, it gives them food, and it gives them medicine. There are a lot of Cuban doctors that are taking care of the people in Venezuela. They volunteer to go there and help the poor people of Venezuela. So the United States is nothing but an imperialist country, and some people try to uh, try to make it, to make it uh, like the United States is really helping people. The United States has never helped its own people. For instance, you take Roosevelt. The only reason he done what he done. He was the scared there's going to be uh, kind of socialism in the United States. There was about 14,000 uh, people in the Communist Party in the Soviet Union. There was about 100,000 people in the Communist Party in the United States around the time uh, before the Second World War. That's why he enacted all those programs. He was pushed into it. Not that he wanted to help people. It was, he was scared of socialism. That's the real reason. All right, next. Go ahead. You want to rebut? You got six minutes. Uh, Come on up and rebut. Too much already. Come on up and rebut. Uh -huh. You got six minutes to uh, I don't spout know, what am off. I rebutting myself or? Just talk about what you want to talk about, okay, like whatever you want to tell, tell you guys. Whatever you want to tell my, us for six I'm minutes. I'm a child of war. Uh, uh, we're in a constant war, and uh, there's never been a day of peace in all my life. I was born in 1938. We had a little peace, but a couple of years before the Italians invaded. But there was a capitalist dictatorship with a fascist Greek uh, uh, military man that take Metaxas, like the Metaxa Seven Star, you know, that good brandy. <laughs> well, same name, Metaxa. And he uh, was like Mussolini and Hitler and the other. Andy. Nazis. And uh, then. Okay. The guy behind you, help him up. So now, I'm uh, sad to report that uh, things are not as bad as they seem. They're a lot worse. Much worse. And uh, the capitalists are killing people on two fronts. One front is the uh, military front. The second front is the economic front. And uh, they're leaving uh, blood and orphans and uh, misery and death and destruction wherever they go 
Okay. And I'm sorry to report in my own beloved USA, but so you say, what the hell, you were born in Greece, you're not even an American. Well, I'm more American than you guys, because I've been an American 81 years. I don't think anybody here is an American for 81 years. Me. 81? Okay, I represent. 91 respect. years. <laughs> okay, I, said, I, I, I accept your seniority. But you know what? My name Aristides Yanabas in Greek history, Aristides is four and a half thousand years. No, two and a half thousand, I'm not good at that. And then, Yanabas, Aristides Yanabas, my name is in USA for three centuries. My grandfather was here in the 19th century. My dad came here early 1905. I come here in 1946 on the boat like Columbus. So my name is here for three centuries in USA. So I'm just as American as anyway. I served in the Army, drafted. My brother joined the Air Force. He dropped out of high school. My father got drafted in World War I. He come back from uh, France with a Purple Heart. I still got my dad's Purple Heart. It's about twice as heavy as the Purple Hearts they give in the recent wars. So now all these wars, me, I almost became an unlawful combatant because when I was in the Army, we had the Cuban Missile Crisis and I was in Virginia. They were going to send us to Cuba to kill those people who never harmed us. So I would be ashamed to tell people that I was in Cuba. Second, I was on the reserves for a couple more years after I came out of the Army in 63. And I could have been sent to Vietnam to kill people. And if I went to Vietnam, like I see these guys, big husky guy downtown, I said, uh, hey man, what do you wear this Vietnam veteran, big jacket and all that? I say, I would be ashamed of myself if I served in Vietnam. How the hell can you be proud of yourself if you were an unlawful combatant and you went to kill some people in a foreign country that never come to kill one American? Either before during the war, during the war, or since. Same thing with the Iraqis. They killed the Iraqis. Same thing with the Libyans, they're killing the Libyans. So they, in Yemen, they're killing people every day. And they want to kill the people in Iran. They want to kill the people in Venezuela. So when is this going to stop? You know, uh, this is genocide. These are crimes against humanity. And I don't hear any of these candidates, uh, Congress or Democrats or Republicans, speaking the real truth. And the truth is that we are a country of unlawful combatants. And I almost became one myself, because I was drafted for two years. I could have been sent to kill innocent people in Cuba or in Vietnam. So the biggest thing is, we stop from now on today, May 18th. Never call it the military-industrial complex. I'm finishing. We call it the military-industrial cartel, because a cartel is a criminal organization that commits crimes for money, for this, for that. So we are working to enrich the American military-industrial cartel. Okay, who's next? I'll take the next one. All right, Andy. Tonight was uh, especially difficult for me to watch because I've been giving talks here since 2007, uh, basically since restaurants went non-smoking, because I'm allergic to cigarette smoke. Many of you uh, don't know or aren't aware that I, I translate books from a wheelbarrow full of paper, a wheelbarrow full of forensic evidence, published in English, but if you don't have time to read 50 books, well, here's a one-page translation of the facts. So uh, tonight, I'm going to start uh, a custom that I did one of my first speeches back then. I'll bring a hundred dollar bill in here every night. It says college on it. I'll make a donation to the college if anybody can provide any credible evidence of any fact that I tell you is a fact in its document. I am no longer going to tolerate somebody saying that never happened when there's a group of Albert Einstein and five of his friends saying, hey, the earth isn't flat. We got pictures from the space shuttle. <laughs> Both sides tonight showed a lack of grasp on reality that is breathtaking on both sides. And so uh, what we'll do is anytime you want to challenge me on a fact, I won't tolerate anybody bullying me and yelling in my face saying that's not true, that never happened. 
that shit ends tonight. You put up a five dollar bill, I'll give you twenty to one odds. Put up a five dollar bill and list the references for your position. And I'll give you two two to one references for the forensic evidence. Okay? Is everybody clear on that? That's yes, what's we gonna are, Andy. What? No, Andy, Tim, Charlie, are you clear on that? When I when I tell you something is a fact, I know I are gonna tolerate saying that's Andy's wild opinion. Well, I don't express the facts, facts, not the scheme. Give us information. You you shout me down without me giving you references. I can give you references if you let me talk, but you both, and I won't tolerate it anymore. So we're going to go forward. I have a few facts that are here. Um, well, Tom Hartman. Now this is not one of my facts, but this is something that Tom Hartman has been talking about, documented. There's no Republican president since Eisenhower, no Republican has gotten control of the White House since Eisenhower without massive fraud and treason against the American people, fixing the election one way or the other. Uh, Trump made a deal, I'm not Trump, Reagan made a deal with it. the Iranians. Hold on to the hostages yeah. until Jimmy yeah. Carter gets defeated. That's outright treason. And we should, and, and President uh, Everett Dirksen said in the time when Nixon was running, he's doing things, he said, they ought not to be doing this, that's treason. Uh, Nixon said he was going to, what, bring an end to the Vietnam War or something, just ball face lies. But that's, that's the number one thing. Uh, number two on the list here of facts is, it's been well documented, Bernie Sanders got the majority, the overwhelming majority of votes be between him and Bernie, uh, Bernie and Hillary, Bernie beat Hillary in many places all over the country, and the media reported Bernie is losing. And in California, they trashed over a, a, something on the order of a million votes that would have gone to Bernie to make it look like the state went for Hillary. Hillary made a deal with the media, and it's well documented in a lot of different books. They said, the media said, we will bury Bernie Sanders for you. We'll report him as losing when he's actually winning if you will do good things for us after you get control of the White House. And the idea that Hillary was one popular among the voters and that's why she uh, w was our candidate, that is a gross distortion of reality of what happened. Many, many people across the country said the two candidates they gave us, it was like choosing between two serial killers. One kills one woman a month, one kills only two women a year, so pick the lesser of two serial killers or the lesser of two rapists. That's how popular those uh, Hillary was. That's why people just voted for Trump in disgust as a protest vote. And still, Trump didn't get the majority of the votes. Trump is number one. This is documented all over the place. There, there have been uh, at least one book I know of, probably several, published by doctors that list the psychopathic, psychological tendencies of, that make Trump totally unfit for any public office. Trump, Trump is widely recognized as having the least number of any minimal qualities to be president. Trump is also number one in having the highest percentage of in, in impeachable characteristics across the board. Any one of those things yeah, should be enough one. for the Democrats just to impeach him and chuck him out of office. We're, and with the Senate and Mitch McConnell, we're looking at the greatest concentration of intellectual Republicans, intellectual prostitutes, owned and operated by billionaire pimps. These people don't believe half the shit that they're putting out in public, but they're being paid. They're paid to lie to us about climate change, they're being paid to lie to us about the safety of uh, fossil fuel pipelines across the board. And also, uh, the country is in a high, un a high employment situation. People are working two and three jobs for poverty wages to try to raise their rent and survive. Uh, so to say that Trump improved the economy is a gross distortion, distortion of reality. Okay, and the, I could go on for half an hour on the documented books I have. I've probably got 50 books that are documented rebuttal in refuting several of the points made by both sides here. So I would highly recommend people 
bring themselves into the real world. Start, start watching and getting news from the websites that pro actually promote documented, provable things you can look up and references in real news. And if anybody's watching Fox News, realize that journalism schools all over the country use Fox News now as a teaching tool. This is how you do good propaganda, and this is how you get a popular percentage of the public believing that Trump is a great Christian leader sent by God to lead us out of the wilderness. There are some mega churches that are teaching that shit. It was insane in 1987, and it's insane today. Back then they were saying, we'll get a whole new plant when Jesus returns, but we have to destroy this one with nuclear war first. We'll get a whole new plant when Jesus returns, but we got to burn a lot of fossil fuel and let the ice caps melt. Who cares about Miami going up 20 feet of water? We'll get a whole new plant when Jesus returns. That's what these fuckers are teaching, and the old English law, look up the movie, The Man for All Seasons, Sir Thomas More. He, he described to his daughter, he says, the law means silence means consent. If you're silent on something, if you're not speaking up and opposing it, it means you go along with it. We have millions of silent Americans that don't want to speak out and say, that shit is insane. I won't tolerate it in my presence anymore. But there's millions of young people that are out of school every Friday from now on for the next 11 years fighting for their future. And the numbers are growing, and the girl that started it was nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize, Peace Prize a month ago. The youngest Nobel nominee for Peace Prize in history, Greta Thunberg. So don't give me any shit about kids being out of school. The, a lot of these kids are risking their futures because they, they haven't got one if we don't get our shit together and stop burning fossil fuel across the board. I'm going to talk about this on June 29th. That's the June 28th or 9th on Saturday. We're going to talk about the Green New Deal and what it means and why we have to go for it and why all of us can't just sit back and be silent. Well, I don't want to get involved. I'm too old. Nobody's, nobody's too young or too old to speak up and say, hey, that's an insane view and I won't tolerate it in my, my presence anymore. We don't get our shit together. The kids that are 13 years old now have no future. That's, that's where it is. The fossil fuel companies and Exxon, they knew what they were doing. And then there's an article yesterday on Common Dreams. Common Dreams posts the best of the best every day. CommonDreams.org. Log on to that site and come talk to me in a week or two and see if you don't see some good stuff. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Who else has a rebuttal? You want a rebut? Gene? No. Okay. In closing tonight, I think the best reasonable explanation of why Trump got elected was because of the spurning of Lady Luck. She resolved she's a South Sider and she hates the North Side. She gave us multiple Bulls victories, multiple Blackhawks victories, and yes, even a president from the South Side. They made a deal with Lady Luck. She came north for a little while, and despite her wrath and best attempts, the Cubs finally won the World Series after 108 years. But because she was a vengeful character, she took her wrath to Washington, D.C., and that is why we got Donald Trump as president. Charlie, closing remarks. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope you decided who to vote for coming up. We have a lot of issues here. Uh, I hope you understand that Hillary won because she was the most popular. She was. She did. She won the vote for the square. Um, I know, despite all the reports of irregularities, I'm sorry. I'm in clean Cook County, and I, there has been no evidence. There may be in other parts of voter suppression, but insufficient amount to, to sway the election. I've seen these things about California, and I, I think we've got to exercise some caution about embracing the first conspiracy theory that shows up on the Internet. Uh, there's going to be a protest on Tuesday against the Chase Bank. It's also a protest the against the pipeline. 
number three pipeline. Now, I like protests. I go to them all the time. But I don't fully understand what that bank had done wrong versus others. But the protest is going to be against the bank. Shut down Chase Bank. I don't understand that. And then I don't understand why it's also a protest against the pipeline when the bank necessarily doesn't have anything directly to do with the pipeline. Now, I'm sorry, Andy, it's good you're concerned you're going to talk about the Green New Deal and stuff, but school kids are supposed to take Friday off from school to do what? Now, you want to influence the deciding officials on public policy, but kids taking off from school has no effect whatsoever on anyone elected to public office regarding economic, ecological policy. It may have some effect on principals or teachers, but even then, so there's no students, and then principals and teachers really don't have anything to do with, with ecological policy decisions. So I don't know what you're achieving. Is this to look like you're achieving something? You have to somehow influence those who can grant the remedy you seek. That's what they're doing, Charlie. All they're not the doing anything to affect. Charlie, that's not right. The, it, it, there's no it's, effect. It's happening. All the, it has no effect whatsoever on any state, any official elected at the federal, state, or local level. That kids skip school doesn't bother them. How? They're changing policy all over the world. How do they change policy? I didn't didn't like you it. just hear me tell you not to bully me and say something? Tell me, me as I'm it's a representative. It's happening all over the world. How, do I, how does the fact that the school kids stay home has no influence They're not whatsoever. staying home, Charlie. They're going to political offices and sitting in. They shut down London three times. They're not the going city to of London just down. made a deal yeah, with the protesters, down. Charlie. No, they're not. Yeah, they are. Not. I won't tolerate that shit, Charlie. All I just right, told you that. Yeah, if you're unfamiliar with the facts, I'll give you the facts. I follow the, I'm in the You're just standing movement. there telling me this is not happening, and I just told you it's happening. It's, it's not having any all effect. All over the world. It is not. It already did, Charlie. It's no, it didn't. Right. It did not. It already did, all over Europe. The protest did not do, it does not. Lady Luck needs to move to London. You have to be involved in a political campaign. Lady Luck needs to move to London. You got to think, I just gave you examples of protests that I can't quite figure out. I like them. I, I like the cause, but they don't, they, there's no nexus. We're in a blue state, Charlie. It's you not know, doing much here. It's happening you know, around the world. Stay, stay home from, you don't even need yeah. to stay home from school to do political things. That's an extracurricular activity. Okay. And we did, we did ecological things going back to the first Earth Day in 1970, all throughout college. We had Chicago Greens. It was established at a university, and we didn't take off school. And we involved in. I've been last week. I was in Washington on green issues. I didn't skip work. I, it's a normal activity. You're just ignoring what I'm telling you. I, what am I telling you? You don't need to do this. It's a, if they want to be an extracurricular activity. Even then, I'm not certain that political activities are allowed in a, in a school situation. If you want to debate this, Charlie, I'll give you 20 to You know, hours. there's policy about... I'll put up 100, you yeah. put up 5. I don't know what this we betting have. thing is. But don't keep okay, telling me yeah. it's not happening. I won't have it anymore. They're okay. not on, accomplishing on, anything. Move on to something else. Don't keep telling me... They accomplish, I accomplished more than they did. By going around to the Illinois delegation. We're not talking about that. We're talking then about Then some kids happening. staying home at school, they just All go right, home. Charlie, move on. Move on, on Charlie. Okay, Andy, gavel us out. Just say a few words. Come on up, Sid. Come on up. Just say a few words. Okay. This is what it's Well, it's, a, it's, very, it's very easy to understand. The kids become a catalyst for other people yeah. to recognize what's happening, and then after a while they'll go up. 
So if you get everybody to go out, the kids, the teachers, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the parents, so forth and so on, then you might get something done. So it's a catalyst, that's <laughs> all. It's very simple to understand. Thank you, Sid. You made that point it's, it's better than I could have. The kids are motivating the adults. The kids are saying they're not old enough to do anything other than risk their school career to protest. Because as the girl said in Sweden last fall, she said, what am I doing in school if I got no future? And if you don't know these kids' future is basically over by 2030, then you are vastly uninformed of the reality you of climate change. You kids to drop out of school? Is that what you're doing? No, I'm not. I'm not. You said it's Charlie, okay. put up or shut up. Whip out a $5 bill and I'll hold up my children hundred. Either put up or school. shut up, Charlie. Don't keep going. I want to see this. Put up or shut that's up. That's not I got a hundred for your five. You said it's okay to drop out of school. I didn't say that. Why go to school if there's no future? That's exactly what the girl said. Yes, and you said it's wonderful. <laughs> what? There's Best stop on her. Climate, climate yeah, change. That's your point. The last, that's the point. last fact. <laughs> Scientists all over the world, Academy of Sciences everywhere, have said the number one problem facing humanity is the melting ice of the North-South Pole and climate change. That's not a debatable fact. It's a, it's a fact. Why go to school? Well, they're dropping out one day a week. They may drop out more days if the politicians don't get their act together. All right, well, Charlie, yeah. enough. Kids Did are taking them. You know, in World War mm -hmm. II, to answer Charlie's question, in World War II, no. the young guys took a, uh, <laughs> they took a day, uh, vacation from school. They didn't go to college. Some even left high school in their senior year to enlist in the military. They took a time out for four years to solve the problem. And that's exactly what we're talking about that's needed now. A timeout from ordinary business as usual to build and deploy billions of tons of everything. Solar panels, wind machines, electric trains. Should talk about electric trains, Charlie. They're happening around the world, too. Electric cars, solar-powered cars. So we're, we're working in a garage in Arlington Heights where we're teaching seventh graders and their parents. You can drive a solar-powered car today. Man backs his car in the garage and charges it right off the roof. The roofing panels are cheaper. Solar panels are cheaper now than electricity from ComEd, and they're about a third the cost of fossil fuel. And okay? I strongly disagree with your point. Put up or shut up. <laughs> put, put up a $5, I'll hold up 100 I'll give you 20 to 1 odds. You want to you want to debate my facts? How many kids? Here, here it is. Okay. You, 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 you want to have a debate someday? Hold up a five and list the references. I'm going to hold up a list five. The documented references, not an opinion. Oh, I, I am officially going I'll to hold up, up a five. So we'll, we'll make a donation. If we'll this we'll is hold up a five to your hundred. Yeah. Well, and we'll you, give you the references, oh, Don, but not, not tonight. Not tonight. <laughs> we're not tonight not because tonight. we're going to oh, have to close out. These we're, proceedings. We're going to close this out now, and everybody can get out a few minutes early. And I'll hold the money. I'd like to compliment. Yeah, that, I'd like to compliment everybody that uh, even that gave a rebuttal. It was a small audience, but uh, thank you all for coming. Yeah, thank you. And I would like to again welcome Charlie, and thanks a lot for everybody coming on up and attending the college tonight. As usual, another spirited debate. Lots of entertainment, and uh, Start we're out of here. All right. All right. Thank you all for coming. Can I give him the I'm going to let him do that now.